Well, here we are once again, another episode of the Middle Country Public Library podcast. Thank you so much for joining us this week in the studio with me, Sal DiMincenzo, is Sarah Fate. Hello. And Nicole Rambo. Hello. How is everyone doing? Okay. Awesome. There's a little bit of housekeeping before we get started into our segments. Mm. If you are watching on YouTube, we, we, we would love it if we can actually move the needle on our subscribers because unfortunately it has not been moving lately. So hit the subscribe button. We're nice people. We don't bite. We're not going to do anything bad to you uh, unless you give us a bad review. No, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> we'll find you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. We have some great stuff coming up, and we have great stuff on the channel anyway uh, for you to look back on. History, we got older episodes mm -hmm. of the podcast. We have events that happen here at the library, including this year's Island Idol. So definitely check it out. Hit the subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. And with that out of the way, mm -hmm. who would like to go first this week? We're teaming up again. All right. How nice. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> We're doing the uh, long list for the National Book Awards. Oh, nice. I feel like... It's a it's a pretty prestigious one, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I like. It's like there's Pulitzer, like the Newbery, and like I feel like those ones. I feel like I hear about more. I don't know yeah. about the National Book Award one. I don't know. National Book Awards. Yeah, but either way, a little background. So the mission of this is from the website. The mission of the National Book Foundation is to celebrate the best literature published in the United States, expand its audience, and ensure that books have a prominent place in our culture. And it's a little like history. They have a nice website. Um, so if you want to take a look, and it gives you more of like a breakdown, but this is the chat GPT summarized version. <laughs> uh, Nicole's boyfriend did her homework. He's genderless. <laughs> On March 16th, I said he's gen it's general. <laughs> On March 16th, 1950, publishers, editors, writers, and critics gathered at the Waldorf Historia Hotel in New York City for the first annual National Book Awards sponsored by the American Book Publishers Council, the Book Manufacturer Institute, and the American Book Sellers Association. So the three of those got together okay. and they had this awards. The event brought together the American literary community to celebrate the best in fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Nice. The awards quickly gained a reputation for recognizing literary excellence, honoring influential, influential writers like Ralph Ellison, William Faulkner, and Rachel Carson within its first decade. In the 60s and 70s, new categories were added, but by the late 80s, they kind of went away, and the focus returned to fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. And then later on in 1996, they added young people's literature, which I'll be talking about today, mm. and translated literature in 2018. Nice. The National Book Foundation then was created in the late 80s <coughs> that oversees the awards and promotes a mission to increase readership. Today, the National Book Awards are regarded as one of the most prestigious literary prizes, alongside the Man Booker Prize and the Nobel Prize for Literature. Really? Wow. I mean, All right, this is serious stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's a little bit about that. And then the, kind of the list goes down with like fiction, right? Fiction mm -hmm. and nonfiction. So Sarah will do that. And then I'll come back mm -hmm. to me for the young people's. Okay. For yep. the young, young people's choices. Young people's. <laughs> yep. Okay. So this is adult. This is adult. Okay. I'm only covering fiction. Fiction. Okay. And these are the winners. No, no. This is the long list. This, this is, is the, the long list. Finalist. The finalist. And the winner will be announced in October. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. So we'll bring you so, the, the winner yes. in October, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cool. And then um, you. you Listeners need to read all of these 10. <laughs> yes, you must list, read these books before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have Martyr um, by <laughs> Kava Akbar. Okay. Uh, and all of these summaries are from the uh, publishers. The publishers. Okay. Uh, yes. Cyrus Shams is a young man grappling with an inheritance of violence and loss. His mother's plane was shot down over the skies of the Persian Gulf in a senseless accident, and his father's life in America was circumscribed by his work killing chickens at a factory farm in the Midwest. Hmm. Hmm. It's, uh, it's a look at how we spend our lives seeking meaning in faith, art, ourselves, and others. So this sounds like it was based on an actual thing that happened when, when uh, the U.S. Navy actually shot down an Iranian, I think it was an Iranian airliner. Accidentally. Um, Accidentally? Yes. Don't worry. They, they won't do that here in Florida or anything like Accidentally? that. Accidentally? <laughs> sure. Did you watch Scandal? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> For listeners who watch Scandal. Um, so this is Ghost Roots by Pemi Aguda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a short story kind of a thing. In this beguiling collection of 12 imaginative stories set in Lagos, Nigeria, Pemi Aguda dramatizes the tension between our yearning to be individuals and the ways we are haunted by what came before. Okay, hopefully this will be the winner 
since it's Ghost Roots and it'll be in Spooktober. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. I'm calling it right now. Okay. <laughs> then we have um, The Most by Jessica Anthony. It's November 3rd, 1957, as Sputnik 2 launches into space, carrying Leica, the doomed Soviet dog. Oh. Don't even get me started. <laughs> A couple began their day. Virgil Beckett, an insurance salesman, isn't particularly happy in his job, but he fulfills the role. And then his wife, Kathleen Beckett, once promising tennis champion with a key shot up her sleeve, is now a mother and a homemaker. And set over the course of eight hours. Interesting. Isn't there a Marvel character th- that the dog actually didn't die in space? It got captured by something and then it became like That's a superhero? In, um, right? Guardians yes. of the Galaxy? Garden, right? uh, something right? yeah. something yeah. like that, yeah. Um, then we have Catalina by Carla Grinejo Villa Vincencio. I saw that from a mile away. I said, just go for it. Just do it. Say the name. I didn't, and I did. <laughs> you did. She got it. Yeah. When Catalina is admitted to Harvard and feels like the fulfillment of destiny, a miracle child escapes death in Latin America, moves to Queens to be raised by her undocumented grandparents, and becomes one of the chosen. But nothing is simple for Catalina, at least of all her own complicated, contradictory, ruthlessly probing mind. Mm. Mm. Cool. Then we have James by Percival Everett. Ooh, I love that. I love that first name, Percival. Percival. When the enslaved Jim overhears that he is about to be sold to a man in New Orleans, separated from his wife and daughter forever, he decides to hide on nearby Jackson Island until he can formulate a plan. (laughs) <laughs> the end. <laughs> well, I'll, I was going to try to keep them uh, brief. But meanwhile, Huck Finn has faked his own death to escape his violent father, recently returned to town. As all readers of American literature know, thus begins the dangerous and transcendent journey by raft down the Mississippi River toward the elusive and too often unreliable promise of the free states and beyond. Cool. Mm-hmm. That sounds neat. Yeah. yeah. Like a good one. These are all very different. Yeah. yeah. So then we have all fours. By, oh, I've heard a lot about this book. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, by Miranda July. Mm-hmm. A semi-famous artist announces her plan to drive cross-country from L.A. to New York. 30 minutes after leaving her husband and child at home, she spontaneously exits the freeway, checks into a nondescript motel, and immerses herself in an entirely different journey. And I feel like every mother probably or, or housewife has probably dreamt about doing this. Sometime or another. Sure. <laughs> and then we have uh, Creation Lake by Rachel Kushner. Hmm. Creation Lake is a novel about a secret agent, a 34-year-old American woman of ruthless tactics, bold opinions, and clean beauty, of course, who is sent to do dirty work in France. Ooh, this one sounds good. Yeah. Oh, and guess the the main character's name. Guess what her name is. That's very good. What is it? Sadie Smith. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Oh, I know, right? <clears throat> so that sounds nice. good. Oh, Creation good like. Okay. Then we have, I know these are, like you said, all very different, right? Yeah. Then we have My Friends hmm. by Hashim Matar. Hmm. One evening, as a young boy growing up in... Yes. <laughs> Benghazi, Khalid oh, okay. hears a bizarre short story read aloud on the radio about a man being eaten alive by a cat and has a sense that his life has been changed forever. Hmm. Okay. It's about the power of words Interesting. and journeys. He ends up in Edinburgh. 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 That's Scotland. how they say it. Yeah. That's how they say it. It's all right. It's spelled Berg. I know. Edinburgh. I know. Edinburgh. Like Edinburgh. Melbourne, Australia is Melbourne. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't like that. <laughs> Sarah will be the judge. <laughs> uh, okay, next up. We're almost there, folks. So You're Dead by Sam Sachs. Like saxophone. Okay. In between the space of time, when Ezra lights, them, lights themselves on fire, and when Ezra dies, the world of this book flashes before their eyes. Mm. Everyone Ezra's ever loved, every place they've felt queer and at home, or queer and out of place, reveals itself in an instant. Hmm. That sounds mm-hmm. scary. I'm sorry. It's told in lyric fragments that span both light times and geography. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's a queer Jewish d- disappoint coming of age story that questions how our historical memory shapes our political and emotional present. 
That sounds deep. quite heady, right? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay, yeah. last. Have a couple of drinks before reading that. <laughs> uh, well, all these books seem pretty, well, yeah, except for pretty, yeah. um, the spy. Thing, yeah, right? I want to read the book where the, yeah. the cat eats the person. I want that yeah. one. Yeah, I know. Then we have Rejection mm. Fiction. Yeah, by fiction. Tony <laughs> Talathamute. What is that? The story of Sal's childhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Rejection is a provocative plunge into the touchiest problems of modern life. Oh, it's another short story. Seven connected stories seamlessly transition between the personal crisis of a complex ensemble and the comic tragedies of sex, relationships, identity, and the internet. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, a little modern tale there. Yeah. And cool. that's the 10 goodies for adult. These are the They'll 10 keep you adult up at night. National Book Award long lists. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, Nicole, you yeah. have for the this kiddies. This is for the young people's young literature. Pe- okay, young it people. seemed to be this year. Anyway, it was like middle grade and YA. Oh, okay. I didn't see too many picture books. Um, do they do? Awards. They've done. <laughs> do they do? I was going to say, do yeah, they do because that? They have their own. Yeah, yeah, big. Yeah. But like the one picture book that I really like called Big, um, it won once. So, okay. Well, yeah, I do think they do do them sometimes, but this year it seems to be middle um, grade oh. and uh, YA. So, the first one we have Ariel Crashes a Train by Olivia A. Cole. This is exploring the harsh reality of OCD and violent intrusive mm-hmm. thoughts in stunning lyrical writing. This novel in verse conjures a haunting yet hopeful portrait of a girl on the edge. Ooh, mm-hmm. I kind of like that. Buffalo Dreamer by Violet Duncan. A National Book Award long-listed novel about Summer, who spends her summers on her family's reservation in Alberta, Canada, and Mm -hmm. embarks on a journey of self-discovery as she experiences vivid dreams about fleeing residential schools, learns about unmarked children's graves, and uncovers her family's painful past, all Mm -hmm. while finding strength in her heritage and hope for the future. And it is based on the author's own family's history. Oh, boy. Then we have Wild Dreamers by Margarita Engel. In this stirring young adult novel and verse from award-winning author Margarita Engel, love and conservation intertwine as two teens go on a, quote, transformative journey celebrating the power of overcoming personal struggles to make a lasting impact. It's a lot of personal struggles, a lot of journeys. Specifically, they actually um, start... Oh, and no, cause there's more. Like, that was from the publisher, but, okay. like, more, like the longer one is um, they uh, discover a passion for conservation, start start a rewilding club to build wildlife crossings and help mountain lions find one another. Oh, that's kind of oh, cool. That's nice. Yes. Oh, a little bit of romance there. Yeah, that's, mountain that's lions nice. founding each other. Yeah. Yeah. Mountain lions and young adults alike. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, and it's like, literally, it says, believing that if pumas can find a better future, so can they. Oh, do you think there's a scene in that book where the like the two the two lines are looking at each other in their eyes, and then like the mentally the camera zooms back and it's the two people looking at each other? No, okay. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> the Great Cool Ranch Dorito in the Sky by Josh Galarza. Ooh, I like the Great Cool, cool ranch. ranch Ranch Dorito in, in the, the Sky. sky. Yeah. Sounds delicious. Well, ever since cancer took his adoptive mother's oh, life, no. these are going to be like emotional. Oh, terrible. Ever since cancer took his adoptive mother's life, Brett has channeled his anxieties into his epic intergalactic Kid Condor comic series. But as his grip on reality falters and his self-destructive fictions about his body and worth consume him, he finds himself confronting painful truths with his journal. And when his journal and securities are exposed online, Ooh. he seeks support from a fierce new friend, Mallory, and faces the courage to address his escalating eating disorder and the cosmic-sized hole in his heart. Oh, my goodness. It started. Know, start, like, the first line was great. Yeah, and it was just like, <laughs> the title, yeah. yeah the title. Bit, yeah. And then it's nothing like what you <laughs> No, there's no Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> the First State of Being by Erin Entrada Kelly. Oh, I do. I love her. Okay. I'm, I'm not a judge, so it's okay. I can say that. I do. Right. Love, I love this author. Cool. When 12 year old Michael Rosario meets a mysterious boy from the future, his life is changed forever. From best selling author Aaron Entrada Kelly, winner of the Newbery Medal for Hell Universe, which is one of my favorite books. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's also a Newbery Honor for We Dream of Space. This novel explores themes of family, friendship, trust, and forgiveness. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a time traveler comes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Into like the 90s. It's also like based in the 90s. Oh, there so you it's go. It's actually 1999 uh, yeah. and it's like on the verge of like Y2K and stuff. Oh. Yeah. Cool. No. We're, we're early 90s. Yeah. Really? Maybe 80s. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you, you, you're right. Oh, stop. <laughs> that was ni- I was like mid 90s. Yeah. So, uh, late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what, what do you, what do you, what, what ages are you like? Well, I mean, uh, you know, 13 and up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Yeah. That yeah that puts me in the eighties though. Nineties. Okay. Yeah. Nineties. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now that we established that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything We Never Had by Randy Rebay. <laughs> Um, this is from the author of the National Book Award finalist, Patron Saints of Nothing. Mm-hmm. Comes an emotionally charged, moving novel about four generations of Filipino-American boys grappling with identity, masculinity, and their fraught father-son relationships. Mm-hmm. And it's told from the multiple perspectives. So it's like the 50s, the 70s, like it's the 80s and like generation. Yeah, yeah, and it's okay. told from different perspectives. It sounds very interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, then we have Kareem Between by Shifa Saltagi Safadi. Oh, that was a good one. The heart, good job. This heartfelt coming-of-age novel in verse tells the powerful story of a seventh-grade Syrian-American boy and his struggles, big and small, as he navigates middle school. Mm. Hmm. Then we have The Unboxing of a Black Girl by Angela Shante. Written as a collection of vignettes and poetry, The Unboxing of a Black Girl is a creative nonfiction reflection on black girlhood. It's a mm. debut YA title by award-winning author Angela Shante, a love letter to black girls set in New York City, and serves as a personal and political critique of how the world phrases black girls. Right. Huh. Neat. Different we, way of, uh, more, yeah, the vignettes you know, doing and something. Yeah, poetry, yeah. yeah. Then we have Free Period by Allie Therese. Helen and Gracie are notorious for their pranks, and they are forced to join the school's community action club. They end up leading a a campaign for period equity after a humiliating mishap. As they tackle the challenges of school politics, annoying siblings, and new crushes, they must decide if their friendship is worth sacrificing for their cause. Is that a play on words? I think so. All right. (laughs) Because once I heard that, I was like, oh, I remember when I was in a senior year, and I had period one was mm-hmm. my free period. So I literally didn't start class for like an hour when I got to school. Did you still go to school though? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd yeah. you do? I, I had the same thing. I hung out in the newspaper office because I was on the newspaper. So oh, that's oh, right. you, know. you know what I did? Oh, what'd you do? <laughs> Slept? No. Yes, you, I did. Yeah. Up, up I, went to to the, I went to the nurse's office and they let me sleep in the... Wow. Yeah, you had like a deal? Did you like bring them something? I think, or something? They, uh, they, I think they all felt so bad. <laughs> and I was like, it's weird. I got you cigarettes and whiskey. Can, yeah. I use the, can I use the bed in the back? All right. Cool. And the final one is Midair by Alicia D. Williams. A tender-souled boy reeling from the death of his best friend struggles to fit into a world that wants him to grow up tough and unfeeling in the stunning illustrated middle grade novel in verse, a quote, full of vulnerability and hope. Nice. Yeah. So with the children's, there's only one um, winner. No, there's only one category because you have fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. All in yeah, it, right? it's just young people's literature. Young people's okay, literature. so adults is um, separating into fiction, nonfiction, and poetry, and, right. I assume, and translated works. Yeah. And thank you. So that everyone gets an award in those different categories. Yes. yes. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. For, adult. Yeah. Children's. for adult I think there's five judges for each category, something like that. Mm. And are the judges? Authors who have won in the past, or are they just like professors? Like, do you know anything like that? I saw it. I don't remember what that. All right, it's probably <laughs> yeah, probably some you know yes. some sort of people. <laughs> They're a, you do that kind of thing. Yeah, They're smart. They're smart people. Yeah, all right, cool. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so it's a well, national book award. It's a national mm-hmm. book award long list. Yeah. Not the short list. list. Do they do a finalist list and then they and then they pick a I winner? I think so, yeah. So it's got like uh, you know, like yeah. the March Madness where they kind of right. brackets. Yeah. Yeah. brackets. Yeah. yeah. And oh, then okay. and November twentieth is actually when they announce that's a ceremony. Oh, nice. Oh. So and it's streamed. So if you'd like to watch it. Yeah, pay. Oh, very nice. Uh, what, do you have to pay to stream it? Yeah. Oh, wow. really? It's terrible. Really? Yeah, because it was like, oh. donate to stream. I'm like, no. Oh, oh I see. Would you have to? Or is it just suggested? Well, they have to pay for the award. I sure. assume they get some sort of financial uh, I mean, award. They do so. I was like looking around the website. They do a lot of like uh, grant stuff, stuff for teens, stuff cool. for... Mm-hmm. So and it's, nice. it's a non-profit, I think so. Yeah. It goes back. Cool. Very good. Uh, thank you both sure. for the Reader's Advisory which yeah. we mm-hmm. tend to do here from time to time. Yeah. Well. Actually, very uh, two full two episodes of Reader's Advisory in a row. It's like we're a library podcast yeah. or something. <laughs> something like <laughs> Hopefully that. your TBRs are getting longer and longer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode. If you want to listen to older episode, read our show notes, just comment on our different episodes because you can do that too. Did you mm-hmm. know that? You can do that mm. at the website. It's mcplpodcast.com. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. And if you liked what you heard today, hit like. So for Sarah Fade and Nicole Rambo, I'm Sally Vincenzo. We'll see you on the next show. <laughs>